applied scikit learn and supervised learning models. Supervised learning and k nearest neighbors. We'll cover in this video supervised learning for how to inspect a data set, the k nearest neighbor model for classification and regression, and how we can optimize the model's hyperparameters. Let's get started. You can find the code in the course repo, supervised learning with scikit learn. So given we have n training examples, with each example we have a labeled target output, and we can take each sample and normally get it into a feature vector through a function and take also the target output. We are looking to learn a function that takes all the samples and maps them to the output targets. And normally for this, there exists many functions in the realm of all possible functions. Normally for classification, the output is discrete and for regression, it's real valued and continuous. In scikit-learn, we can load the iris data set as follows using the load iris, and we can see that it's actually a NumPy TD matrix. We can actually get it into the pandas data frame format by PDE data frame, and we can start inspecting the data frame. We would normally start by inspecting the data set by looking at such things like the metadata here and looking at the describe functionality as well. So working out the mean of the features themselves, and then also looking at the histograms as well. So we can see the histogram of the features themselves across all the samples as follows. Next, we would normally look at the correlation between the features themselves. And again, in reminding, correlation between two variables is a linear relationship between the two variables, and a negative correlation is a perfectly inverse linear relationship between the two variables. And a correlation of zero, there is no correlation at all between the two variables. In this case, we can actually see that there are some correlations, and the mathematics for correlation is actually normalized covariance. We can plot this with a better plotting functionality, and we can see that actually there is a strong correlation between the pedal length and the pedal width in this case. And we can also infer other reasonable correlations between the features themselves. We can start to look at actually how the features uh, vary with each other features amongst the classes as well. So we can see some of the features themselves for actually predicting which class we have are actually linearly separable and some of them are combined as well. This will become important later for other models which need this condition, such as support vector machines. Again, we can do it here as well. Scattering. Getting on to our first machine learning method, the ideal one to start with is the k-nearest neighbors classifier, which is a non-parametric method, meaning it doesn't actually learn uh, parameters in the end of the day, and actually consists of choosing the k closest training examples from the feature space to predict the output. It works for both classification and regression. However, the output varies, of course, in classification. We assign it to the most common k classes amongst its k nearest neighbors. And for regression, we take the average of the values of the k nearest neighbors. It is an instant space learning algorithm and is insensitive to the distance function and local structure that we use. Now, we normally start with the Euclidean distance for this algorithm, however, it can support other distances as well. For classification, it estimates the conditional probability for each class as the fraction of points closest sample under consideration with that given class label, and where i is the indicated function where it is 1 and the input is 1, or true, and the output gets assigned to the class with the largest probability. We can start looking at this by actually taking our data set and splitting it into a train and test set using the test train test split method in scikit-learn. We can load it from the neighbors module and get it from the k nearest neighbors classifier. Here we have some extra code that is actually plotting the decision boundary for us. We train it by dot fit and then we can actually predict the classes by putting samples in and using the product dot predict. In this case, we can start looking at for a three classification class where we take the 15 nearest neighbors to classify an individual selection. We can see that we actually drive a non-linear decision boundary, as you can see here. So if we look at this, these points here would actually be the training data. And obviously we have some interspersed classes here, which kind of mix, hence given rise to these non-linearity decision reasons which you can actually see some form in here. In this case, actually increasing k is normally better to regularize the model, and decreasing k will actually lead to more overfitting, which can be beneficial in some cases. 
We can start looking at this as well by looking at what we just created and creating another key nearest neighbor classifier using the dot fit. And we can start looking at the confusion matrix and the overall accuracy. In this case, when we plot the confusion matrix, the ideal confusion matrix would be only numerical elements down the leading diagonal and then zero elements in the off diagonals. In this case, it's not ideal, else we would get an accuracy of 100% on the training set. However, in this case, we can read off this and actually see that when the actual class was this class here, Virginica, we predicted Versicolor for one instance. And similarly, when there was actual color of Versicolor, we predicted incorrectly Virginica for two of the elements or classes. Now, how can we actually improve this model? So we can improve this model by optimizing the hyperparameter k, and we can do this through something called cross-validation. So instead of actually splitting the data set and only training on part of it, we can actually train on all the data set by actually combining it within different intervals. So we can split it in actually five different folds, if you will, five different sets, and then train on four of them. And then obviously one set is held out where we actually test on. And we can repeat this over the other permutations available to us and combine all the results into one. Scikit-learn actually supports this by using the cross-val score in this case. And we can set cross-validation to 10 in this case. Now we'll be trying to work out the optimal value of k in this case. And obviously this array or list here, we can also plot it as well. So the higher the accuracy, the better. And when we actually take the argument maximum of this case, the highest k we actually is k is three. And we get a cross-validation score of about 96%. Now, obviously we talked about it being sensitive to other distance metrics too. And it is sensitive to the distance metric chosen for the sample feature space under consideration. We normally work in Euclidean space, but there are other distance metrics available to us that we should be aware of, such as the Manhattan distance, the Chebyshev distance, the Minowski distance, which is high level meta abstraction of Euclidean. In this case, where if we set P as two, we get the Euclidean distance, the weighted Minowski distance, and the SE Euclidean distance, and the Malobus distance as well. Now, in this case, how would we work out the ideal distance metric to use? We could also optimize this hyperparameter as well. Again, using the similar framework and using cross-validation above as well. In this case, we are actually find the distance metric optimal for our case is Euclidean and we get K is three. And obviously this gives us a cross-validation score of 96%. Now we can use these parameters, which we've learned to then actually be used in our final model. And hopefully we normally get a more accurate bus model. And we would normally use this model in production as well. So you can see here that we have same confusion matrix as above, coincidentally. However, in on average, we would normally improve the accuracy by doing this hyperparameter tuning or optimization in this case. K nearest neighbors can also be used for regression. So when the output labels are continuous, rather than discrete, the label assigned to query point is computed based on the mean of the labels to its nearest neighbors. So we can load this from the neighbors, k nearest neighbor regressor, and use it as follows as the fit and also predict methods. But we can start to look at actually understand how this works intuitively. So if we say for k is five, we're actually looking at the mean between these samples. So one, two, three, four, five, the mean may be one of these lines here, most likely this one. And then when we switch past a data point, we then end up using a different data point under consideration. And hence we get this jagged shape here because we're taking a different set of five samples to then compute the mean of from the output. We can also weight the distances closer to the sample higher and we get this certain shape appearing as well. It's important to note actually for the k nearest neighbor regression and classification that it works by actually keeping essentially all the training data in memory and seeing the input example under consideration which k nearest neighbors it's closest to, either for classification or regression. Now this is not ideal because this means, especially if the training set is large, we have to keep it all in memory. There are certain scikit-learn optimizations evolved to optimize this, such as KD trees and K ball trees as well. In summary, we covered supervised learning form 
inspecting a dataset K nearest neighbor model for classification and regression and optimizing a model's hyperparameters.